release that it wasn't ready for release. So you know, lots of very notable people are talking against the uh, latest release of Windows. Mm-hmm. But in any case, it's 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 been presumed that maybe behind this release of uh, of Steam for Linux, maybe there is some kind of a plan to release some hardware that's based on a low-cost, uh, high-performance, customized operating system that, of course, has Linux in it. And, you know, maybe Linux and NVIDIA driver or something that's that's going to work in high performance in a sort of a blob form. Uh, and maybe that's going to be a sort of a console that's running Linux inside. Uh, I always say it in one place. I don't think there is any real substance to it. I think the intention Steam might have is for people who can install a Linux-based operating system. In, in their case, it's only Ubuntu. Uh, will get maximal performance. Uh, but well, I, I'll, I'll never, uh, I'd never knock the possibility of a, uh, a Linux-based gaming console coming before, because if you look yeah. at the gaming, the console industry especially, the customer base is very transient. And you know, if you look back in history, when we had the Nintendo 8-bit history, obviously then we had the Super Nintendo after that, and that was uh, horrendously popular. Now, with the popularity of the Super Nintendo, if you were going to make a prediction at the time, you would say that the N64, which was the next version up. Uh, when that came out, it was going to be the same hit that the Super Nintendo was. In fact, it wasn't, and the N64 fell behind, certainly in the UK and the US. The N64 fell behind the PlayStation, which was a surprise from Sony. Now, after Sony PlayStation 2, you would think that everybody would want to buy the PlayStation 3, because the PlayStation 2 was horrendously more popular than the Xbox, the original Xbox at the time. Yeah, Microsoft then jumped in with the 360, and they started selling more, and uh, they got in. So it's, it's a very transient. There's no, I don't think there's a lot of loyalty in the. Uh, in the well, you have to invest a hell of a lot of money, and plus oh, yeah. tolerate many losses uh, for many quarters, yeah. maybe three years, two years before you, if if you even, you know. So the investment you'd have to get for it, you know, capital, mm. you know, venture capital. I mean, with, with, now it's all about services as well. You have Netflix and all the other services coming to the consoles or already here, sorry. And uh, I, I think, I, I do think for gaming-wise, it's going to be removed from the desktop PC. I, I can't see it. Not that there isn't big supporters. Is Netflix desktop. supported on PlayStation? Yes, yes, I believe it is. It? Uh, it's it, it, they, they very much insist on not making it available for Linux, even though it would be easy. Uh, I think it's available for Android. But mm. it should be it should be noted that the CEO of the company was on the board of Microsoft until about two months ago, a month and a half ago, or something like that. So it's it's quite clear, you know, that I I know this about he's he's not the only person in the company that's from Microsoft um, or connected to Microsoft. But but Netflix has always been kind of behind the scenes, very friendly with Microsoft, so they wouldn't be so nice to uh, to. It is. Um, I mean, Netflix is on the PS3. Um, I think, yeah, it is, uh, it is on, in the UK as well. It's not just the US service. But you know, I, th- I think desktop PC gaming is uh, is going to go. Not because there isn't the diehard fans that want to upgrade the computers ad infinitum to match the specs of the new games, but because of the fact that there's so many issues surrounding it, you have uh, the development costs, I think, uh, which are an issue because of the fact that a PC game isn't like developing one for, the, say, the Xbox 360, where everybody's got the same hardware, and you know that one, one size fits all. You have a multitude of problems with people's hardware and conflicts that you weren't aware of, and with all the best will in the world, you can't test a game for every configuration of PC that it's going to land upon. So you've got that. You've also got the piracy issue, and it's always traditionally been the easier system for the desktop PC to get the the uh, pirated copy, for want of a better word, um, of a game on on the PC. Um, a lot more difficult for the PlayStation or the 360. So. I think the desktop gaming is going to go because it won't be seen as viable, and um, companies will invest more in developing for the, for the consoles, which is makes more sense because the piracy loss is less, and in addition, the development costs. You know, is it you... really a loss though? Sorry, is it really a loss? Well, for I mean, individual developers, you could, you could, I can agree with the fact that if there is an abundance of games, there might be less sale, but if you're a developer and somebody's copying your game. Uh, the question is: Is that person somebody would have bought it for exactly. money in the first place? So, so I I would be careful to perpetuate perpetuating the myth that you know that if somebody, you know, you say pirate, but if somebody copies your game or something and gets it for free on the web, it actually reduces your sale. 
the same goes for a book. Yeah, I mean, we, 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 we could argue. I mean, I can't prove it any more than somebody can disprove it. And I think that in a lot of cases, piracy does aid the uh, the, the spreading of the of the word of a good title. Yeah. I think piracy does damage the titles, especially in the movie world. Piracy does damage the films that shouldn't be sold in the first place, that have low quality, that people sh- didn't want to buy and get misled into buying. I think the decent titles, if you look at, say, for example, um, the Torrid Freak website that highlight the most downloaded movies, all the most downloaded movies are the ones that sell the best. So I think if you have a product which is good value for money and it's one that people wouldn't see, then people will, piracy will benefit it. I think it just brings to the fore the poor titles which people shouldn't be wasting money on because they're not up to scratch and they're not what they're advertised as. I think that's where piracy harm, or piracy harms. And that's, one could argue, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, so yes, so that that was uh, that that was the the console gaming side of things. Um, to be honest, I, I haven't had a lot of time to uh, have a look at any new titles. I did always like to uh, to have a little look at the Linux gaming world and just uh, make note of anything that was new and up and coming. And really, there's I haven't had a lot of time, so there's nothing that immediately springs out to me. Um, we've got still got Pioneer under major development, uh, and that's coming on really really nicely. Um, if people don't know, Pioneer is the open source version. The Linux of um, Elite 2 Frontier, um, although I'm probably not supposed to say that because there's probably copyright issues involved in that. And, uh, but it's, it's heavily based or has a lot of similarities to it. It's a fantastic piece of work so far. Um, people have ever played the game Elite or Elite 2, you'll know what I'm talking about. It's, it's probably the predecessor or the very original Grand Theft Auto, um, albeit in space, uh, where you could literally do what you liked and uh, trade and commit crimes and save the universe or whatever. Absolutely fantastic. If you want to check that out, there will be a link on the show note to uh, to its official site. It's in heavy development. Um, you probably won't find any repos, um, so you're going to have to download it from the site. Um, but yeah, if you can check it out, have a look, because it's, uh, it's very good. And really, there was nothing else that stuck out uh, immediately to me. Um, no. I don't think so. Oh, no, that's still the same. We, we're going to have a hopefully have a test very shortly with Mumble, um, which is something I haven't experienced. Roy, have you had any? Uh, no. Any- well, the version I have and the version that's available for my distribution, the 2010 uh, LTS. My main desktop is Kubuntu. My other alternate desktop is Debian, but. On my on the repositories of this of this distribution, I only have an older version of Mumble, so the one I have does not have the record option. So, yeah. which would have been nice. So I thought maybe somebody else um, will be able to help us. And I did some research into it. And the nice thing about Mumble is we will be able to have even like ten people connected at the same time. So this the option of exploring, you know, talking mm-hmm. to like so-called you know audience or something maybe. People join us live while we're, you know, recording the show and participate and, and do something that's that's going to make the show a bit more interesting, a bit more kind of innovative in a way. Um, so that's that's one thing we can do, and of course we can also instead uh, um, test, you know. Uh, um, I, th- I have all kinds of software I've been playing around with. Uh, we also used to play around a lot with video back yeah. about a year ago, more than a year ago. We can we can still try and do that on occasions, but I'm looking at my version of Mumble, and it's like yours. I'm not sure the exact uh, release, but this has come from the uh, Ubuntu uh, repo, so it's probably an Ubuntu-specific uh, compile. But I've got the record. Mine's from 2010 as well, and it has got a record button on it. So yeah, so something. so it means we can basically do the show in uh, Mumble, and you'd be the one recording. I suppose we should do that. But Just I, very quickly. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, I was just, I was going to mention something that uh, I was meant to say uh, very early on in the show, and it was something I saw the other day. I was watching a documentary, uh, BBC Two, I think it was, on icebergs. Um, it had the chat from Spring Watch or Autumn Watch, or whatever's on at the moment. So it's, this, for people that don't know, is a UK show that uh, sticks a video camera at wildlife in uh, in various forests around England and uh, watches things. It's, uh, it's something my, my good wife likes watching, I can't stand. But there was a very interesting um, documentary afterwards about icebergs, and they were cataloguing and mapping the uh, the icebergs with sonar and using it tracking devices to go through the water channels within the iceberg to find out how it's actually moving. Anyway, that's by the by. The software they're using to do all this was Ubuntu. Um, I noticed just 
the camera very quickly pans onto the boat where they're coordinating all the different uh, sensors and uh, equipment that they had set up and they're using Ubuntu. I believe it was, uh, well, I, I can't exactly say, but I would guess it was around the...